All right, people, Max Alden here again. Welcome back to some more Cyberpunk. Uh, finally playing Phantom Liberty DLC. Uh, just thought I'd make a quick video on the intro, uh, the sort of garage area that you have to sneak through to get into Dogtown and list off some items and uh, things I think people might overlook and should pick up. Obviously, right away, pick up this Taro Graffiti that uh, appears here at the entrance of Dogtown. Some people might just walk past that. So I thought I'd use that one for the first uh, entry. Uh, next was this little box with this legendary uh, handgun next to it. In the first room you sneak into basically. Uh, some people might walk past that. Uh, in this room where you have to uh, turn on the power again. There's a little uh, document on the ground you might want to pick up. Uh, ties into a little background storyline that's going on in this area to do with some smugglers some people might not see it laying on the ground there uh, then come around down these stairs and there's uh, some items to pick up underneath these stairs uh, nothing too exciting but some people might miss those items uh, next is when you're uh, platforming through the garage uh, make sure to investigate this little van over here uh, because there's going to be some legendary items in this case. I'm not sure if they're the same every time uh, for everyone, but there is going to be this van and these items in this little uh, cache over here. I got some old Netrunner gear that seemed pretty cool. So yeah, next to this van that you're going to be able to scan, and I think it's something to do with the smugglers too, part of their cache maybe. Come along, uh, there's going to be some more stuff uh, next to this van. It's really on the main path with the uh, glowing lights that Songbird is putting up. So you can't really miss these ones. But some people might be running past quickly and not notice there's things to pick up here. So just keep your eye uh, when you see these vans coming up because there's stuff to pick up next to them. Uh, next, when you jump up over here, you're going to see all this stuff over uh, this uh, drop so make sure you come over here and I think it's one of the smugglers uh, part of the ceiling has collapsed on him or something and his gear uh, presumably is left next to him so you can pick that up and there's another little data shard here with some more details about this smuggling operation that was going on it's some nice little environmental storytelling that's going on in the background when V sneaking in the dog town it's nice that they didn't just have you wandering through here listening to Songbird. There's also this other like uh, secret storyline going on in the background. I found this interesting next to this truck with the headlights on. You can, If you were strong enough, you can push this down to create an alternative way across this area. Uh, Songbird has another way she wants you to follow, but I went that way. And uh, turns out if you have enough strength... You can push that over. Um, but when you follow the main path, you can jump over here to this little uh, area. There's going to be a car with this gun. And again, I'm not sure if these items are the same for everyone or if they're randomly generated. But there was another little cache inside this car. So yeah, this is when you're uh, following uh, Songbird. Uh, yeah, just follow her into this area. And don't go the way she wants you to, but come over here to this path, come down these stairs, and uh, there's going to be some more hidden stuff underneath this area. Again, I think it's more stuff from this smuggler crew whose storyline's going on in the background. Uh, Songbird was just talking to me, so I answered her before I opened this uh, cache. I've got pretty high net running ability, so I have a lot of optional dialogue to do with net running. Uh, that you can speak to Songbird about, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, again, there's another little data chart down here too, next to this stuff, with some more details about the smuggling operation. So yeah, just thought I'd point all these out, just because uh, the first time through, people might be rushing it a bit and not notice there was a lot of stuff hidden. Uh, when you're supposed to go through the elevator door, turn around, and if you have enough power... Uh, body ability with V you can force open this door and there's quite a lot of stuff in here I think it's some ex-militech security area 
Um, they've got a lot of legendary items in these caches. Uh, there's quite a lot of stuff laying around here. Another electric button. Um, I was just scanning everywhere to make sure I didn't miss anything. And then there's some more items over on these shelves. Uh, I'm not sure what this is exactly. But yeah, I just scanned it. It was something to do with the smugglers. Guessing some items they left behind or were confiscated or whatever. Um, I think that was some trash I was picking up, but I took it anyway. <laughs> Uh, and again, these are some uh, bits of scrap or something that you can scan. They have a little question mark on them, so I think there's something to do with the smugglers. And maybe scanning these is important, so I decided to do that. And then you're going to come over to the uh, sort of desktop computer. Uh, well, I stole this ammo first. Uh, and there's going to be some more details in here. Again, uh, going over this little uh, smuggler storyline that you can sort of follow through the environmental storytelling. Um, I quite like that even in the very first part of this DLC they have some optional optional content like this. Uh, I'm not sure if you everyone has to be like a level 10 with the body attributes to be able to force that door. But when I was doing it, uh, it just said if you have 10 points in body you can force this door. And yeah, V has some dialogue about uh, mentioning the smuggling operation then. So that's pretty cool that there was actually some dialogue tied to this little optional uh, uh, thing. Another uh, computer later on. This is just down the next hallway. Uh, it's got some more details about the people who were hiding out in this area. Uh, trying to ditch their uh, goods and whatever. So yeah, maybe uh, people will walk past this computer, so I thought I'd point it out as well. Uh, again, nothing uh, that you actually have to look at here, but it's cool that it's here. Uh, again, in that area, turn around from that computer, come down these stairs, and there's going to be some more hidden uh, cache items. Some legendary stuff, some epic stuff. I think this is all new clothing items that weren't in the main game either. Uh... But obviously there's so many uh, outfits and whatever in this game that it's hard to tell. Uh, just before you get into the elevator here and you can uh, ask uh, Songbird about uh, Hansen. There's another little data shard sitting on a ledge here that some people might just walk right past. So I just thought I would show that too. Um, once you get past that area V is going to have to force open this shutter to get into the market area. Um, I think everybody can get through that door, uh, like the four, like it's part of the story, so you have to. Um, but anyway, across from that, there's going to be all these items behind this gate here. So to get in there, you come out through this uh, little area. Again, under the stairs, there's going to be this hole in the wall, and you can just come straight in here and just steal everything that's in here as well. Again, on a first run through, I think some people could just walk straight past this stuff. But I'm a bit of a scavenger, hunter, magpie brain type. So I just see stuff and I go in and look for it. And I try to avoid going down the main path as much as possible. And looking for all these little hidden areas. And I was really happy that even in the very first opening part of Dogtown here, that they really had so much stuff for you to find in like hidden little corners. Finally, just to uh, end this video, I just want to say people should definitely go and speak to this gun vendor once they get into the main market of Dogtown. He's pretty funny and has a lot more personality uh, from just this one NPC than the NPCs in some entire games that I've played recently. This guy's more amusing and more full of life than like some main companions in other games I've played recently. And, uh, he doesn't seem to be that important to the story or anything, but yeah, people should go speak to this guy. I thought his dialogue was pretty funny. So yeah, alright people, thanks for watching.